Hello, this is the Ramblings of an Indisciple Mind podcast for Monday, July 25th, 2016. As of this recording, Sierra is still missing. So, we took uh, some time last week and we went to Toronto, Canada. One of the um, the things that's kind of cool about living here in Detroit uh, is that in the Detroit area, I should say, I don't live in Detroit, is that getting to Canada is relatively quick and easy to do. Uh, we've got basically three options for getting into Canada. Uh, from downtown Detroit, we've got the Windsor Tunnel, which tunnels underneath the Detroit River. We've got the Ambassador Bridge, which goes over it. Not surprising. And then if we go uh, north... Um, from Detroit, but probably about an hour north, there's a little town called Port Huron, and there's the Blue Water Bridge there. And so that's how we went, just because we figured it was probably a little bit less traffic and whatnot. And going, it was it was really backed up. I mean, it wasn't moving much. It was kind of strange. Um, but once we got past the backups and Then we were able to get into Canada, and you get a passport, obviously. But but other than that, it's it's pretty easy to do to get in and out. Um, and, and so we did a number of things. We kind of ranged all over the the countryside of of uh, Quebec there, which is where we're at. No, not Quebec, Ontario. Sorry, wrong province. Ontario is the province. Um, but we did, we did a number of things, you know, so, so the first day we just kind of got, we drove to London, Ontario, and, and, uh, stayed at this, uh, you know, at this hotel that was, it was a Holiday Inn Express, we, or I think it was a Holiday Inn Express, it was a Holiday Inn Hotel, we basically had enough points where all of our Holiday Inn hotels were free, so... From a lodging standpoint, we didn't pay as much as we would have for five five nights. Um, and so then from there, we went the next day, we went to this little town called Stratford. And every year they do a festival that, given the name, it makes a lot of sense. They do a number of plays. And yeah, they do some Shakespeare. Um, and... So we, we, you know, the wife had heard of this. We'd never been there before. We looked to see, okay, so what could we do that was like on a on a, a matinee? Because we actually had plans to meet with some friends for dinner, and we settled on uh, of our choices uh, a chorus line, which we'd never seen, and so that was an interesting play. Our seats were; it was in a. a I, I, I don't know what the official term is. It was kind of a three-quarter. Um, there are seats around three-quarters of the stage. And we were on one side. And you know, so if you've, I don't know, if you've seen a chorus line, it's all about people auditioning to be on a chorus line in a Broadway musical. And so for a bunch of the time, they were like all lined up, all the, all the you know, and, and from that point, position it kind of sucked because you could only see people from the side and you couldn't see a lot of the, the facial expressions but they also tried to, to realize that they were not in a traditional theater that they need to pay attention to the people on the sides um, there was some good music in that the acting was really good there wasn't anybody that we knew or knew of in there um, but it was an interesting show it was one of these you know classic Broadway shows we'd never seen so, uh, so I enjoyed it well enough, you know. I don't know if it's something I'd be really Jones in the sea again, but um, but it, it was it was fun to see and interesting to see. It, it's if you haven't seen it, it's one of these kind of um, well, it, it was it was kind of based off of uh, some conversations that were recorded of chorus line dancers talking about their 
uh, trials and tribulations. And so while they did kind of weave it around the plot of these people auditioning for a particular show, it does, it is kind of a bunch of uh, vignettes that aren't necessarily related, uh, other than just being about different, separate people that are auditioning for this one show. So not a, a really cohesive plot line, story arc kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. So then uh, it turned out uh, we couldn't do dinner with our friends. They had a, they had a conflict or something. So, but they were going to take us to this little local restaurant called Joe's Diner. And, and since we just said, well, since this is a good restaurant, let's, you know, we we're told it's a good restaurant. Let's go there anyway. And one of their, one of their um, signature dishes was their meatloaf. And so I, yeah, I'm a big meatloaf guy. So I got the meatloaf and it was really good. Uh, it was, yeah, they must have given us, I don't know, it was a ton of meatloaf, I ate it all, <laughs> I shouldn't have, uh, and then, um, but it was, it was probably my second restaurant meatloaf, um, number one being Granite City, and then for dessert, the wife got a, a, a what's I think a strawberry rhubarb pie, and I got cheesecake, and it was this massive thing of cheesecake, but it was, it was, it was strange, because it was like a whipped cheesecake, so it was, it was very light and fluffy, um, which is not usually what something you think of for cheesecake, but it tasted good. It tasted awesome. And then from there, we went to our next hotel, which I believe was in Kitchener, if I'm remembering correctly. And, and we're kind of slowly wending our way toward Toronto. Um, and the next day, we met up with with a friend that we've had actually for a long time on, on Twitter and, and Facebook and we arranged to meet her for lunch so we kind of had a, a lazy morning at the hotel we didn't have to get going right away uh, we did have to go out and get breakfast so I believe uh, that was the morning when we hit Tim Hortons and we met her for lunch and then we went to this uh, mansion that was called Dundon, Dundurn Castle uh, there in Hamilton, um, and you know that was fun. It's always interesting going through these old, old uh, houses and, and seeing how how you know, how they lived and, and talk about the servants. And, and it was funny because they had a pretty extensive downstairs. It was, it was rather impressive all the all the stuff they had downstairs for for storage and for servants and, and all this stuff. So we did that. And then we went to Toronto proper, and we got into our hotel, and our hotel was the Radisson that was connected to the Sky Dome, which is where the Blue Jays play. And we splurged a little bit and got a suite. Not one, not, not one of the rooms that looks out into, because they have a number of rooms that look out into the Sky Dome itself. This actually looked out over the CN Tower, which is right next door. And and um, it was a beautiful room. The one thing that was weird is you got up the elevator, and this hotel was kind of in a big arc, but they were told to not use any curves. So you just have these little sections that were kind of you kind of like a pixelated curve. It was just kind of slowly and. The suite was, you know, practically, it was at the, the far end of this. And you walked and you walked and you walked. And they'd obviously arranged this thing so that you really couldn't see how far it was to go. I don't know if somebody said, hey, if you can show them this big, long, straight hallway, they're going to be like, oh, my gosh, are we there yet? But this wasn't any better. And, I mean, it was a long walk. I mean, it had to have been at least half a mile from the elevators. But, you know, inside, an, inside a hotel seems like a really long walk. Um, the room was gorgeous. Uh, it was just, hey, there was a dining room, uh, a nice living room. We were only on the second floor, so we could look down at the people that were um, milling about at, around the CN Tower and, and, and things. It was kind of funny. This area is all built up. And I remember, like, 20 years ago or so when we first went to do the CN Tower, um, it was like in this industrial area or the little parking lot. I remember having, we had a hard time finding out where do we go in the park for this thing. And we did find it, but 
you know, now it's just all tourist central right there. So it's, it's a beautiful room. Just, you know, and a nice big bathroom with a bathtub and a shepherd shower and all this stuff. And our friend was with us. She came with us. And we, we hung out there in a room for, for a couple hours. And then we went to the ball game. We had tickets to the ball game. So we went to see the um, Seattle Mariners come visit the Blue Jays and beat the Blue Jays, as it turned out. And that was fun. I, I drank some beer. And, um, and it was a fun game. It was nice because it was, it was hot as Hades there. But fortunately, by the time the game started, because it was a, a neat thing game, the section where we were in was already in shade. So while it was hot, it wasn't unbearable um, because of that. Uh, it was hot enough I didn't have my baseball cap on. But, but uh, And then we helped, uh, helped get our friend home, and, and we just kind of went and enjoyed the, enjoyed the room quite a bit. And, you know, that was a fun day, in part because, in large part, because not only because we did all this stuff, but because of who we were with, which is somebody that we talked a lot to online and still do. But it was, it's, once again, great fun to to meet somebody face-to-face. So the next day, um, right by there, right by the CN Tower and, and the hotel, we didn't have to check out, as it turned out, until 1.00. There was, in addition to the CN Tower, which we did not do this time, there was Ripley's Aquarium. And the Ripley's, I think, is from Ripley's, believe it or not. So uh, we just had to do that because it was close by and it was indoors. Uh, we just had to walk there. And it wasn't, it's not that far walk. We could literally, I could see it uh, from from the hotel room window. And it's like across, across this little plaza there. So... The problem was we had the, you know, we were really close to it from the room. If I could have broken out a window and jumped down, I would have been like halfway there. But we had to walk all the way back to the elevator, which takes us to the lobby, and then basically walk that whole length again um, outside. So, it's just, uh, yeah, I, it's a nice hotel, and I, and I liked it very much. But, wow, they need some elevators on the other end or something. They, that, that, that needs work. <laughs> that needs work. But we went to the aquarium, and it was really cool. There were a lot of lot of neat pictures. If you're following me on the Facebook uh, or the Twitters, I posted a lot of stuff that I Instagrammed. Or if you follow me on Instagram. If you can't follow me on Instagram, I think I'm at Gizmo 2 there. I don't know who the heck else has got at Gizmo, but I had to go with 2. Um, I, I posted a bunch of stuff there. And, you know, lots of, you know, sharks and manta rays and, all sorts of cool things there. So we spent some time on that, and then it was basically time to get get to the uh, hotel again and finish packing up and, and check out, and we did that. Unfortunately, there was a, a ball game that was supposed to kick off at 1, and that was right about the time we were trying to check out, so we had to wait a little bit for uh, the valet to bring our car because there's no, there was a, there was a valet lot, but I mean, there's no lot you can get to there. Uh, so you, you got to valet park it. You know, that's kind of typical for big city hotels. You're pretty much stuck valet parking. Um, but we got out of there, um, right, like right as the game was starting. And you know, once we got out of the, out of the you know, part of the problem was everybody was trying to get out because 1 o'clock was like when the day ended for the valet parking. So uh, everybody and their brother was trying to get their car out. So it was a bit of a traffic jam there. Plus you had all these people walking right by there to go to the go uh, into the um, into the Sky Dome. Which I guess is uh, technically called the Rogers Center. Um, and then that night we went and we had dinner with a, a, an online friend of the wife. Somebody that uh, they both uh, played on an online gaming site. And so we had dinner with, with, with her and her husband. And they had another friend who was in town that came over for dinner, and they invited another one, so we had even six. And they made us Thanksgiving freaking dinner. They cooked an actual turkey. And they had mashed potatoes, which were only instant, and we've kind of gotten away from instant. It's just like, but I don't know what he did to them. But, uh, you know, they, they obviously put some sort of, you know, I don't know, it's like scallions or something in it, but they were really, for instant potatoes, they were quite tasty quite tasty indeed so that was pretty nice we had a nice time with them and then but we still had like an hour and a half drive we were going back to london 
is where we situated our, our hotel room, mainly to, to um, kind of cut down on the drive on Sunday. And so we got to London, it was like 9 o'clock, and um, we were at a Holiday Inn Express. So they had what we call the pig trough. So it's the first place that had breakfast uh, in, in the hotel for us. A lot of times we like to go to go to these restaurants and get the pig trough. I got to say, I was kind of disappointed because they didn't... I went down at one point before the wife was ready and got some coffee. They had a lot of stuff. And, and we got down there with a half an hour to go in the breakfast buffet. And all the yogurt was gone. All the muffins were gone. But we got enough to and then we came home, we got to the border, that took a little time, probably half an hour. And and then we, we did a detour over to Frankenmuth with the chicken dinners that we love so much and had some liner there. And uh, yeah, and then we came home. It was a great time. We ha- It was a fun time. We haven't been there in a while. Uh, it's been like 20 years since we've been in Toronto. Uh, the exchange rates have... have changed around again so it is once again advantageous for us to do so to take these trips because uh, I think I saw one exchange rate that said that each each um, how does that work each US dollar works out to be like a, 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 a dollar 25 in Canadian money so something that costs you know $125, say, in Canadian funds would only cost $100 in U.S. funds. You know, makes sense. So, we actually could save a little bit of money, uh, potentially. Although, I, it seemed to me like prices were a wee bit higher all the way through. So, I have a feeling it's pretty much a wash. But, it's not like um, in olden days where... Um, Come on, dude. You're sitting in the middle of the freaking road. Moron. Um, you know, where you're losing money on the exchange and the stuff's expensive. And, you know, and it's, yeah, it's actually costing you money. So, But, yeah, we're going to have to go back. There's lots of things we want to see. We got people in the, new, in the area that we know now. So... Um, we've, got, we've got a few good reasons to go back. And, and uh, things to do. Um, there's still a lot we could probably do in, in Toronto and revisit in Toronto as well. So uh, that would be fun to do. So we'll have to uh, have to go back. But it was it was fun to be there again. Um, yeah, you know, for visiting a foreign country, yeah, all the traffic all the traffic uh, signs are in kilometers instead of miles and the, the money's obviously different it's very different it's like it's very brightly colored and it, instead of being paper it's like thin plastic sheets which is interesting uh, but in a lot of ways it's, it's not that much different from being here you, you get a lot of the same brands you do get some new uh, brands that show up uh, that you know kind of let you know that hey you're not in Kansas anymore but it's 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 really nice to nice place to be. The roads are spectacular. Oh my gosh! Don't get me started on the roads. Um, compared to what we have here, they're beautiful, and you know we had a great time. Definitely go back. So if you're someplace where you can get to Canada, um, I would say it's nice. Now obviously, if you go to Quebec, where they speak French predominantly. You, you have the potential for more culture shock. I think I've spoken about my experience in that regard. So just be warned that, uh, you know, if you go to Quebec, be prepared to speak France, French. <laughs> because that's what they do. But i got to stop this. So I'm going to let that be that for today. I'll be back tomorrow, much shorter-winded. And I'll be talking to you then. So be seeing you.